What it do, surprise shoddy crew, and hey, my daisy loves. Is it still recording? This Snapchat update? What just happened? <gasps> okay, it did. All right. Sorry. Um, I am overdue one for a song, so I am going to do one for you all tonight. And then also this passage of scripture keeps coming up. So I'm going to do this one first. And this is going to be an activity for us all what is love to you okay whether you want to talk about your love language or what things make you feel loved even writing down what is love not to you like what doesn't feel like love to you take the time to actually sit down and reflect on that um and what you desire you know in your marriage okay step one coach bay activity all right so in my reflection time one of the words that came up was trust like to me love feels like trust okay um y'all know we already did the one word with the keisha cole um feature and monica trust right and then we also have a word that's called proof by chris brown and um it's really in the actions right like as much as i used to think words of affirmation were um, absolutely necessary for me. I'm at a point in my life where I really don't care what you're saying. <laughs> like, I need, I need to see it, right? And so, um, proof though, God already proved his love for us. The love that a lot of us look for, he already gave, and that's going to bring us to the song that I'm going to do tonight. But God already proved he loved us by sending Jesus, and Jesus died for us, already overcame was resurrected got up all power like they already proved that they love us right so then it comes up you know like how do you show humans how do you show your kingdom spouse that you love them like in what ways um do they feel loved and those are important conversations and stuff to have right um but the scripture i was thinking about whether or not i was gonna mention this other part the scripture is coming from first john chapter four verse uh, starting at verse seven and going to the end of that chapter is called God's love in ours. And um, no matter what it is, because if you and your spouse, whether married or dating or friends or whatever the case may be, um, if y'all are in a place where, um, you know, you still need healing, you still have to learn each other and all of that. Um, the important part in there is going to be intention like I, I know I'm saying like words ain't enough I need to see the actions but that's why it's so very important that God's love is what has woven you both together because you will you will be able to see and understand their heart um because God does and he will show that to you because his love is um what brought y'all's union together right so uh I don't want to get too far into that. So let's just read the verses real quick. And we're going to highlight verse 16 because I told y'all trust was the big one for me. Um, feeling like somebody trusts me and me being able to trust them. Right. And in and, and having that conversation with God, he was showing me like, you know, do you trust me, daughter? Like if if you really loves me, like you would trust me. Right. But that comes with getting to know him, the intimacy and all of that, his presence, and yes, even trusting him blindly, like even when you can't see and nothing making sense and all of that, okay? So he always flips it on me no matter what conversation I seem to be having with God about love and a human and my husband, it, he always flips it on me, okay? So verse seven, <laughs> dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. So this is how God proved it, right? He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. That is an action. This is love. Not that we loved God, okay? So completely independent of what we were giving back, what we were deserving of, right? But this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. It was his action towards us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins, the very people. Not that we loved him, but what he did for those that he loved. All right, and then of course the action that Jesus did again was dying for our sins while we were yet sinners, right? Um, so verse 11, 
Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So no, not just your spouse, starting with you, right? Um, your family, your friends, strangers, believers, folks who don't believe, right? We also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Verse 13, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. And then we know that his Holy Spirit joins us, these unions, um, he in the midst. Verse 15, if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. Verse 16, this is the one he highlighted to me specifically for trust because that's what kept coming up in all in our conversation, verse 16. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. If you rely on the love that God has for you, that means you trust in his love for you, right? I know how I feel when it's like, why are you acting like you can't trust me? Like, <laughs> What are you doing? And I know I'm a fickle human, right? But how do we look when we love God, right? We say we do, and we're having a hard time trusting him, which again, we'd be having to heal. We'd be extenuating circumstances, things going on. God knows that he knows our hearts. Again, so important to be dealing with the person that God joined you to so he can show you their heart, right? Um, but we know and rely on the love that God has for us. In order to do that, that means we trust him. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Verse 17, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And we've talked about that before. And I don't know if we even talk about that um, in the trust video. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. But that's one of the reasons why it may be hard to trust because love is still being perfected in you. You're still scared. You're still fearful. Fearful that things from the past are going to happen again. Fearful that you're going to be left. Fearful that you're going to be rejected. Those are just examples. But that is why you're having a hard time trusting and that love has not been perfected. Fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Now, this passage of scripture is ultimately talking about the day of judgment, right? But it applies. It trickles down. Verse 19, we love because he first loved us and it is in action, okay? Verse 20, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister, okay? So, um... I did do the whole passage, but again, he highlighted specific things to me because we were talking about trust, but the name of this passage is God's love and ours, okay? So y'all take the time to go read it, reflect on it, and marinate too, but also take the time to do the coach bag activity that I gave y'all in the beginning, okay? So love y'all. See y'all in the next few uploads. <laughs>